Amen and amen. Bless the people around you. Take your seat and let's listen to God's word. This morning we had an amazing service. God spoke and I want to say some of the things again. But I tell you, God is a good God. Amen. This morning I said, and I'm, I'm going to say it again because it's on my heart. I said it now um, for a couple of services. That salvation came through one man. Sin came into the world through one man. But interesting, the first one to sin was not that man. It was his wife. That was his wife. And if he took in his godly responsibility, and he took up his godly responsibility seriously, he would have reprimanded his wife and caused her to be in a place again, and they would have never been the full of sin. Amen. The responsible person was Adam, not Eve. So that's why the Bible says, that God will visit the fathers, not the mothers, the fathers, till the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. And that God will visit the fathers to a thousand of generations of, to those who love God. How do you love God? By taking his words to heart. God, you know, bailed out. We will say the word bailed out the human race a couple of times. There's no injustice in God and there's no unholiness in God whatsoever. And everything that he created, he created extremely holy. And all evil came through one evil personality. And that's called Satan or Lucifer. So goodness come to the earth through, normally through one man. And bad things come to the earth normally through one man as well. Normally one man that still starts all the nonsense. Okay? In the beginning, we know that God almost destroyed the earth. But one man found, found favor in his sight. That man's name was Noah. Before I go on, I need to tell you what type of person I am and what type of faith I live by. I do not wonder about God's word and wonder, oh, maybe not the whole earth was filled with water. And maybe it didn't work exactly like that. Maybe partly. I'm not a person that doubts like that. I'm a person that believes God's word as it is, and I know when, God, when it's true, and I know when people do not speak the truth. Amen. 
So in the days of Noah, God was sorry that he made the human race. And he said he's going to destroy. But one man, one man found favor with God. How was it possible that this one man, among all the people of the earth, there were many people on the earth at that point of time, how was it possible that only one man, that one man found favor among all these pagan people who did so bad, such bad things? How is it possible that one man found favor in God's sight? One man, not a group. You see, we are always of the opinion. We think that um, if most of the people think so, it must be so. Say to guys, that's a wrong viewpoint. If you're a Christian, that's the wrong viewpoint to start with. It's not to say if everyone thinks that way, that it's the right way. In the days of Noah, Noah was the only man on the earth among many humans. That thought otherwise. Why is it possible that one man was now not going along with all the evil on the earth? That was God's hand on him. Because you know God was really sorry that he made he created the human race. He wanted to wipe them out because they were so evil. And so many evil things on the, on the earth. That he was sorry that he made the human race. But he didn't want to wipe them out completely. So he found one man. Because he knew that the things that he had in mind and the things that he wanted to do concerning this fallen human race, he wanted to save them. And he wanted a remnant for himself. He wanted the people that will be with him in heaven forever. And like I said in the past, he didn't make them robots. He gave them a free will. But one man responded to the grace of God and the hand of God upon his life. And that was Noah. And Noah was an amazing man. And the Bible calls him in Hebrew 11 as a preacher of righteousness. So he was preaching. But he had no Bible. He had nothing to go by. But the voice of God that was, was working in his spirit. And I like that very much. God gave him instructions how to build the ark. Because God knew he was going to wipe the earth, wipe the human race by a great flood. And he did exactly that. We still see the marks on the earth of that, of that great flood. One man found favor. This man responded to God. And that what started to do what God told him to do. And he started to tell the people, you're living wrong. Now the Bible says about this last days, that in the last days, just before the second coming of Jesus, it will be like in the days of Noah. Now what was in the days of Noah? They didn't worry about God. They did their own thing. They did what they thought was okay to do. The Bible says they will get into marriage. They will go on with their lives as normal. And they will think the things that they do on the earth is completely okay. It was not okay with God. Now, if you look at the things today, you look at the transgender nonsense on the earth, you look at homosexuality, that's the detestable thing in God's sight, you look at all the Satanism and occult things that are going on. I mean, people worship other gods left, right, and center. They don't worry about it anymore. They don't even worry to hide it anymore. And you look at all the perversion and all the wickedness and the murder and the things that's going on today, I mean, people just kill people and think it's okay to kill people today. A young man, a farm foreman, 21 years old, in the free state, just killed like that. A young man, his whole life before him, what did he do wrong? Just kill him. It's okay to kill a man. It's just okay to kill a young man. How wicked can people get? I tell you, murder is murder. And if that's not going to stop in this country, this country will be cursed. And it was like that in the days of Noah. The people just did what they thought was okay to do. They were just killing people, sexual perversion, pedophilia, and many other nonsense that went on. And God was sorry that he made the earth, was ready to wipe the earth. But one man found favor. And every person on this planet is a descendant of that one man. So the whole human race got saved. God saved the whole human race through one man. That was a preacher of righteousness. It took him 100 years to build that ark. There was no machinery, nothing. No YouTube. Couldn't work out how to build the ark. He had to hear God's voice. And he built the ark exactly as God told him. But pastor, how could he hear God so exactly? I know exactly how it happened because God told me exactly how I should build this building. Exactly 100% to the finest of detail. 
I didn't consult, I did consult people concerning the building of the building. But the architects told me, this is impossible. You cannot build a building like that. And I went on. And eventually to legalize it, I well went to a, um, a person that drew up papers and p pictures about buildings, etc., etc. I can't remember what you call it in English, Pastor Wim. What do you call that, that trade, that career? A bouwrekenaar, a bouwtekenaar, a bouwtekenaar. Huh? A draftsman. I went to a draftsman, a bouwtekenaar, and he was drawing the plans for me, and um, I went for it. And I, I told him exactly what he should do. He didn't do what he wanted to do. So I know how it is to hear God's voice. God gave me every fine detail of this building. And I built it exactly as he told me to build it. So I know how Noah built the ark. That's why I got no doubt about he was building. The ark, the ark didn't look like a boat. It didn't look like a boat at all. And the poor people thought he was a nutcase. And for 100 years, he was building this ark. And preaching to people that they should repent away from, and turn away from their wicked ways. They laughed at him because he's a nutcase. Today I know the things that I preach, people think I'm a nutcase. And every other true preacher of God, the people will think it's a nutcase because people that really preach God's word does not go along with the flow of the world. Because many of those on the broad road that lead to destruction. And only few are those that go in through the narrow gate and stay on the narrow road. Only few find that. So the masses cannot be correct. That I found out long time ago in my life. I got to follow God's word. I got to do what the Bible tells me to do. And when the Bible tells me something, I need to follow what the Bible says, and that's through faith. I mean, so God saved the human race at that point of time through one man and his three sons. He, he, he taught his three sons the right way. And obviously their wives and his own wife. And the whole human race got saved by this one man's righteousness that was worked in his life by God Almighty. Give God a hand for salvation. Because God didn't want to destroy the whole human race. He wanted a remnant that will be with him in heaven. And he had a plan. And then again, God wanted to wipe the earth. For whatever reasons, I suppose again because of wickedness and sin. And the days of Egypt and the days of Jacob when Joseph became second in charge of Egypt. It's sometimes hard for people to understand that the whole earth could have been flooded. It was flooded. The marks are everywhere on the earth. You can go and do your research yourself. I did a lot of research on these things. On the pyramids, for example, these signs of huge floods. The pyramids was not built after. Like so many people believe it was built by the Pharaoh. It was not built by the Pharaoh. It was built by people before the flood. The pharaoh, pharaohs just used the pyramids and reconstructed them a little bit to suit their needs. And even the lion in, for, in front of the pyramids, the one lost his head. And you, could see, you can see, if you do research, on these statues, they, they, they were, there was a big flood involved. And it's also similar pyramids in Mexico. Very similar. Very occultic, occultly built for occultic purposes. But the earth was, in, was so shook by the flood that even the angle of the earth and the grease changed. You can even see that in those pyramids. Those pyramids were built by half breed people, giants. They still dig up their skeletons, enormous people, because they have tried to trace this. The, the big rocks that the pyramids in Mexico was built by. And they found them um, very, very far, I will incorrectly say. It's built in Mexico, but they found the place where the rocks came from on the, in exactly at the south of South America. No humans could have carried that. No normal human like us. It was done by big giants. That was bastards. Mixtures between angels and humans. So God wiped them as well. They became crazy. They were man-eaters. The Bible called them the giants of old. They were huge people. They ate humans. They were not people. They were half people, half-breeds, hybrids. 
And they were crazy. They were man-eaters. And they had sexual intercourse with anything that moved. And bastards got born on the earth. And today they dig them out and they say, dinosaurs, if they were God's creation, God would have kept them safe in the ark. Because all the animals of the earth, they worked it out, could fit into the ark two by two. And even those who will be eaten by humans like cattle and will be eaten by other animals like the lions and the zebras was taken far more than two in the ark. But they came and they line up. Miracle. They came and they line up. At that point of time, there was not a seed that divided because the earth got shook by the flood. The seed didn't divide the continents. So the animals, the animals came two by two. Every single one of them. Every species came two by two. It sounds far-fetched, but it happened. And if you go and do your calculations, all the animals on the planet can fit into the ark two by two and even more for those who will be eaten and abused by humans and other animals. And the flood came. There was a day when God said to Noah, you preach long enough, the ark is done, seal the doors, close the doors, and as he did it, the water came down, and the waters underneath the earth opened, and the waters was rising, and the people found out their mistake. What a sad story. But at 100 years, where they rejected the preacher of righteousness preaching, and they all got drowned in the flood. Everything that God didn't create, they all got drowned in the flood. Second salvation through one single man. It's amazing. God worked in the heart of Joseph, the young man, who refused to defile himself with the things of this world and the things of Egypt. Even refusing a beautiful Egyptian woman that came for him, his master's wife, when his master was in military, in the military, his master was in the military, fighting off the enemies of Egypt. And Joseph was the servant, the slave servant there. And the wife obviously was a long time with her, with her husband. And she looked at this good-looking young boy, Joseph. And she wanted him. And she went for him. When she could not get him, she accused him of sexual harassment. He was thrown into jail. But Joseph made up his mind, like the man Daniel, that he will not defile himself with the things of this world. That he will do nothing. He will not displease God. And he will not do this thing against God. And he will not do this thing against his own master, although he was a slave. And eventually, he became the savior by the plan that God gave him. Because the whole human race would have been wiped out at that point of time because of that drought. And all the whole of human race was centered around that area at that point of time. I mean, and then the third one, the greatest of them all, Jesus Christ. God saved the whole world through the whole human race, through one man again. Give God a hand for that one man. Can you see God's love in this? Give God a hand for his grace and his love. I mean, the sins of the people were rising to the heavens. The people who got murdered, their blood, the Bible says their blood cried to the heavens. First one that got murdered was Abel. And every murder, every person that gets murdered after that, the blood of Abel called that person's blood to call to the heavens. And every time a person gets murdered on this earth, his blood called together, even today, together with the blood of Abel to the heavens. Someone got killed. Someone got murdered. And God does not sleep. I thank God that he doesn't sleep. And people might get away. They might get away in courts. They might never be caught, but I tell you, there's a God in heaven that knows everything. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Two times God wanted to destroy the earth. Noah, Egypt, and then the last time, God decided, I'm going to create a permanent solution. I will become a man. And God decided that God the Word God the Father and God the Holy Spirit decided that God the Word will come to the earth and become a human. But completely, didn't cheat. Didn't cheat. Come on. Doesn't help to cheat. It's not fair to cheat. I mean, we as children used to play hide and seek when we were young. And you're supposed to close your eyes and not look where the other person is hiding or the other kids are hiding. But you know you cheated, you know, you look like this, you know. You look through your fingers. 
and then you will get them. That's cheap. Say to guys, that's cheating. Wachgryper ki noem jy dit. That's cheating. But God will never cheat. When he became a man, he didn't become a halfway a man. He didn't become a man with certain abilities still that's godly. He became totally a man. He did not cheat when he became a man. He's not a cheater. Give God a hand for him. Amen. And the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was, the, the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. And it says in Isaiah, the virgin that never had any sexual intercourse with a man will be pregnant and she will give birth to a male child and you will call him Emmanuel, meaning God with you. Everyone shout, Emmanuel. Amen. God with us. God became a man. When God became a man, he didn't cheat. He didn't become a halfway God and halfway man. He didn't become a man with divine abilities. He was a man like me and you, like any other baby. Only difference is he had not a sinful soul and a sinful spirit. Nothing. The difference between the baby that get born today and the baby of Jesus, the only difference is this. The baby that get born today get born into sin, his soul as well. But Jesus was not born into sin. But he had a sinful body. Because in his flesh he was the son of David, he was a sinner. But it's the Holy Spirit that impregnated Mary. And she gave birth to a male child. Great miracle. Give God hand for that miracle. And everything about God is a miracle. Everything that he does is always miracles. If it's not a miracle, it's not God. If it's possible with humans to do it, then it's not God. If it's impossible to do, then it's God. So nothing is impossible with him. And anything that you, God called you to do, and if, if it's possible to do it, he didn't call you to do it. Because God will never, never share his honor with no man. That's the way he is. If you can do it, he will not interfere. He will leave you to do it. And many people make great, great, great successes of many things. But when God does it, he makes sure that no human can get the honor. And that's how the Israeli nation was born. Out of a man's loins. It was 99 years old, and this child, his promised child, got born when he was 100. Which man can produce any sperm at 99? And which, which woman who could never give him a child could all of a sudden give him a child at a similar age? Which man can make a woman pregnant at 99? You tell me. God made sure. That Abraham and everyone afterwards know that it was God who did it. So you must know the boy Isaac was a miracle boy. Give God a hand for a miracle boy. A miracle boy. A miracle boy. So the whole Jewish nation is a miracle nation. And therefore I tell everyone and I tell every political person, and I tell the government of this country, don't you touch the Jewish people. I know they're not saints. I know they're not so cool. But you don't touch them. It's a miracle nation. And out of them came a second miracle. The man Jesus. Born from a woman that never had sexual intercourse with a man. Never. She was a virgin. Whatever God does, it's always amazing and it's a miracle. Amen. Amen. God is good. So nothing is impossible. I trust the Lord every day for a miracle. I trust the Lord every day for some sort of miracle. Because he know, I know wherever he is, there will be miracles. There will always be miracles. And the greatest miracles is, is when a sinner comes to repentance. I can tell you many of that. And people that everyone thought it's impossible, they cannot be saved. And so, by the way, I was one of those that could not be saved. Everyone said so. Amen. I can tell you people like Ray McCauley who didn't even finish school. Standard 8 gemaakt. Grade 10 I suppose. A bouncer in clubs. And God took hold of him. And he became a preacher in this country. 
that sort of greatly shook the, this nation. Amen. By human standards, he was not qualified to do that at all. I take you to a preacher in Liberia who was the naked warrior. Some of the people after I preached, they went to look on YouTube. A naked warrior. He was a crazy man. He made sure that all the villages that he visited, that all the men they die. So he left behind orphans and widows. And he fought all his fights naked, a madman. And he was always running in front like Alexander the Great. A madman. Who thought that this man can be saved? Huh? He was, he was mad. He left so many villages in Liberia. He left so many villages full of widows and orphans. Killed all the men. And then one day someone preached to him. And he came to salvation. Give God a hand for that, amen. And he came to his right mind. And he became immediately a great disciple of Jesus Christ. That's a miracle, man. He started to follow Jesus. And he became an evangelist. And went back to all the villages that he killed so many men and left so many orphans and widows behind. And he went and asked for forgiveness. And led them to Jesus as well. That is God's greatest miraculous powers. Because who can change the human heart? Who can change the human heart? No one but Jesus. Give God a hand. Amen. Only Jesus can. I mean, today that man is a preacher. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. He was mad, this man. He killed so many people. But God saved him. Say to God, he's through amazing grace. Give God a hand for this amazing grace. Ach, I can tell you about many other examples. God is so amazing. I mean, I mean, people that got raised from the dead. People who escaped, escaped death. People who came back from the death. People who visited hell and heaven, and God brought them back again. God is amazing. And everyone say the same thing. And one Buddhist almost was buried, almost cremated rather. And just before he got cremated, his soul went. His soul went, and I suppose God took him. I do not know how he got there, but he went to hell. And there was a chief, chief demon at the gates of hell with a lizard type of face. Very, very unfamiliar to this Buddhist young man. Who was a good Buddhist. You know that Buddhists are actually good people. They're very good people. They get trained to be very good. So they're very great people. But they're not Christians. They try to be good all their life. So this was a good young Buddhist, very devoted Buddhist. And they carry him after his death to be cremated. And in the kist he woke up. But in the meantime, he went to hell. And at the gates of hell, there was a chief demon, a very huge demon. And the de chief demon went through the books. Like you'll go to heaven, the angels will go through the books and find your name there. And the, the chief demon said to him, your name is not in this book, you cannot enter here. But I must show you what's going on here. And this chief demon, an ugly looking lizard faced thing, took him through hell. And he saw many people there. And he saw Buddhists as well. And he saw a very devoted Buddhist, one Buddhist who trained him. And he was shocked. Because he knew that was a man that really tried to be good. And he asked this chief demon, why is this good man here in this torment? And the chief demon told him, he's here, plain, plain straight. He's here because he didn't believe in the God of the Christians and his son Jesus Christ. Just plain straight that way. He was shocked. Then he saw many others. And then he saw Buddha himself in hell. The man who started that religion. He saw him. He said, why is he here? He was such a good man. And the same answer came to him three times with Buddhas. He is here because he didn't believe in the God of the Christians and his son Jesus Christ. And then the, uh, the, the, the chief demon said, you've got to go back. Otherwise, you can never, never return to the earth, but you've got to go back. And he went back. And God took him back. And he felt himself in the coffin, already bad smelling in the tropical Asian heat. Tropical heat. Already his body was decaying. There was not a good smell within the coffin. 
but he woke up in that coffin. Now, tonight you can either reject that story or you can receive it. That's your business. But I've been at a couple of places, and I know these things are real. Myself, I've been in some heaven. Do not know where. It was not the third heaven. The third heaven is the one who got rule and reign, and we will all go forever. But there's a first heaven, there's a second heaven. And I myself was in the second heaven two times. So I know these things are real. And he woke up. And he jumped up, and he threw open the coffin, almost, almost at the fire, because they cremate their dead. And he stood up and he said, guys, we've been deceived all these years. We serve a false religion. We should serve the God of the Christians and his son, Jesus Christ. Plain straight. Clive, not the God of the Jews, the God of the Christians and his son, Jesus Christ. Give God a hand. Amen. I cannot say the God of the Jews, Clive, because it's not a God of the Jews. Because anyone who rejects Jesus does not know the God of heaven. And if the Jews rejected Jesus, they do not know God at all. If you reject the Son, you reject the Father. Plain straight. We pray for the Jews really to be saved. Because they were the chosen nation, and it's still the chosen nation, but they rejected the Messiah. We pray. Pray, Lord God of heaven. Save the Jewish nation. Save that miracle nation. For they do not know you today. In Jesus' name. Some people think, oh, because Jews, they must know God. They cannot know God without Jesus. No one can know God without Jesus. Jesus is the only way in the truth and the life. The only way to the Father. And anyone that denies the Son, denies the Father. And anyone that doesn't know the Son does not know the Father. So the Jews cannot. Some Christians think that automatically must know God because they are Jews. And because Abraham was a Jew. And he's a Jew. And because Jesus is a Jew. Anyone that rejects Jesus and denies Jesus, reject the Father and deny the Father. No one can know the Father but by Jesus. Sorry, Clive. Pray for your family. Amen. They will be saved, the Bible says so. When they meet the Messiah, they will be saved. Amen. So this Buddhist woke up there, shouted immediately, Hey guys, we've been deceived. We've been, we believe in the wrong gods. We should believe in the God of the Christians and His Son, Jesus Christ. That stands out for me. It's amazing. And he became an evangelist immediately. And he shook the Buddhist world. But obviously, they wanted to kill him because Satan doesn't, didn't like what he was doing. I do not know if he's still alive. But what I know is that he preached with all his heart and he was running with this gospel. People who escaped hell so closely. It's not preaching the gospel. They are running with the gospel. If you tasted the fires of hell, and by God's grace, you got out there, you will not preach the gospel. You will bark the gospel. You will not take it easy. You will run as far as possible with this gospel. And you'll say, you'll preach it to everyone possible. That you can. Amen. They went to hell because they didn't believe in the God of the Christians and his son Jesus Christ. That stood out for me. He was a Buddhist. They tried to kill him because Satan hated him. But he led other, many other Buddhists to Jesus Christ. Give God hand for such miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A Jew, not knowing Jesus, cannot, go to, cannot know the Father. You need to know that very well. Anyone that doesn't know Jesus can never know the Father. Can never be with the Father. Jesus is the only way. That one is so important in your preaching and in your witnessing. There's no other way to the Father but by Jesus. And obviously by the grace that comes by the Spirit of grace, which is the Holy Spirit. Give God hand for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. So God loved humans so much that he revealed himself to people in the Amazon jungle. Many, many cases like that. And preached to them the gospel. And they do not have, the, they do not have a Bible. But they know. The whole story of the Bible. God is self-revealing. That is amazing. 
But they can never know the truth if one who doesn't have the word of God in his heart go and preach to them. Amazing miracles is when people forgive. Forgiveness, salvation is a great, it's the greatest miracle there is. Even me, my life, if I look back, I was an old bike gangster. Was hanging out with the hell's angels and other weird groups. For me to be saved is one amazing miracle. All salvation is amazing miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for miracles. And most of all, thank you for people that get saved. Because to be saved, to forgive is also an amazing miracle. A person that when God enables you to forgive, it's amazing. It's amazing. People cannot forgive in the world. But when they forgive, it's because of God's hand upon them. Forgiveness is an amazing miracle. God is full of miracles and full of surprises. You always need to forgive. But you cannot forgive by yourself. It is God who works it in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. The greatest forgiveness miracles that you hear about is the Christians that get tortured by communist Russia. How they forgive their torturers. They forgive those who torture them. And one great miracle was one in Iran. When an American missionary went there to preach. And they caught him because you're not allowed to preach in Iran, so by the way, you're not allowed to do it at all. And he went in to preach, and they arrested him, thinking and were very sure that he was actually a spy for the USA, him and his friend, two missionaries. And they started to torture them severely. They tortured them severely. And eventually, one day, the guy was so fed up with this torture and in a great pain. He thought, what will I do, God? What shall I do at his time with God in the cell? What will I do? And God said to him, love the one who tortured you. I said, okay, God, how must I love him? And God told him, first ask him his name, and you want to get to know him. And that morning, they brought him in like any other morning to be tortured as an American spy. And when they, his torture was before him, he asked him, sir, seeing that I'm going to see you many a day, I think it's a good thing that I get to know your name. And he said, his name is so-and-so. And he asked him, what is your name? Seeing that I'm going to see you every morning, at least I can greet you and get to know you. The man was very much surprised and immediately full of shock. He went and was running out of the cell, went to the other Iranian prison wardens and said, this man is not a spy, he's really a Christian. Give God a hand, amen. They immediately brought him out to court, and he appeared before court, and they asked him, what did you, you and your friend came to do in Iran? And he didn't lie. You're not, you're not allowed to preach in Iran. You're not allowed to preach this gospel. But he was ready not to lie. He made up his mind, he's not going to lie, he's going to tell the truth. Ask him, because there's actually the death sentence to anyone who preached the gospel in Iran. The death sentence. He said, what did you come to do in this country? And he stood up and said, sir, I came to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to you and all other people in Iran. The whole court became very quiet. And this all happened because this man decided he's going to love the man and forgive the man who tortured him. And that torture is not a joke, my friend. But he did what God told him to do and started to love the person. And asked for his name and said, I want to get to know you. And that man immediately knew this was not just a spy. This man is supposed really to be a Christian because Christians are known worldwide that they forgive those who kill them and torture them. Real Christians. And the court was quiet, no death sentence, and they immediately allowed him to go. Him and his friend. God is good. Give him a great hand. Amen. Another great miracle of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a miracle, friend. It's a great miracle. Another great miracle is a man, a, a certain man, a medical doctor, that went to the Amazon. He had a pilot license. And he went to the Amazon. 
and he was troubled with his plane, and he landed there. And the people he went to preach to, they killed him. Can you believe it? Will you love those people if they killed your father? Come on, be honest, Sam. Will you love them if they killed your father? <laughs> huh? Be honest. Sonia, will you love them? Huh? You don't know. Because when God's grace come upon you, it's a different story. When God's grace come, come, upon you, come upon you, you do things that you never knew that you will do. Later on, this guy's sons went back to the same people who killed their father to go and preach to them again. That's a miracle. Give God a hand for miracles. That's a miracle. Huh? And this time, the very murderer of their father gave his heart to Jesus. Give God a hand. Amen. Forgiveness is an amazing miracle. Who can do that? Only when God is involved. Will you like a person that killed your father? They led this man to Jesus. And they led many of the tribe to Jesus. And the best of all is when this man, who now gave his heart to Jesus, who killed their father, became an evangelist as well and led many others to Jesus in the Amazon jungle. Give God a hand. Amen. That is God's miraculous power. Who can forgive like that? No one can. Only when God's miraculous power is at work in us, in Jesus' name. Pray, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for grace. Thank you for love. Thank you for forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is, these are miracles. These are the greatest miracles, actually. When people forgive like this. Amen. There's another man, Idi Amin, the murderer in Uganda, who murdered so many of his own people, so many of his own people, and murdered many Indians and many other people. And he was actually a man-eater. When some medical doctor that he forced to be in his house to look after his medical condition, opened the freezer one day, what did he see? The many heads of different people were shocked. This man was a man-eater. He destroyed Uganda, killing so many of his own people. And eventually, the people of Uganda got fed up. They wanted to kill him, and he fled to Arabia. He was a great friend of the Arabians because he hated the Jews, and he liked the, the Nazi Germans very much. He hated the Jews with a passion, and he tried once to kidnap some Jews on a plane, hijack a plane, and the Israeli army came to Uganda and uh, went on a military move, and they, they delivered these people. They rescued these people in the whole plane. And you know, the way they could do it, very interesting story, because it was actually the Israelis who built this airport for Uganda previously, so they had all the plans. That life, you know that. So they had the plans. So they went to rescue their own people. And they took them back to Israel. But eventually, Idi Amin had to flee Uganda and was now sitting in Arabia at the mercy of the Arabians, which are not so good people. But the miracle is this. One of his sons, he had many sons, one of his sons became an evangelist and went to every village where his father murdered so many people and preached the gospel to them. And led many to Jesus and went to ask forgiveness for what his father has done to those villages. That's a miracle. Give God a hand. Amen. When these things happen, you know God is involved. That's impossible for a human to forgive like that. For those people in Uganda to listen to Idi Amin's son, preaching to them, and they give their hearts to Jesus. And that is how God defeats the devil and crushes his head again. Give God a hand. Amen. Instead of hating his son because he killed so many of them, God worked it in the hearts of people that this very evil man's son will preach. And even the people who fled his father and many of their family members got killed by his father, they listen to the preacher, the evangelist, and give their hearts to Jesus. I would like one day to invite this man so that you can listen to him yourself. 
Amen. God is good. Give him a hand. Amen. These are great miracles. Are you still looking for miracles? I love miracles. Hallelujah. Me, myself, is a miracle. If I see where I came from, it's hard to explain what you've been. But I know the great miracle power of God. Amen. God is a good God. Always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, I never give up on people. I never give up on no one. I cannot. The worst of murderers I will not give up on. Because I know my God can do it. I don't like murder nothing. But I don't give up on people. Knowing what my God can do it. Say to guys too, what will I call you by? God will do it. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give up on people. Because God is the miracle worker. I can tell you about great miracles. So many miracles happen here. So many people's legs grow. But it's not really the leg that grow. A great miracle that happened here, and it's actually a common miracle here, um, or a, a miracle that, that often happened rather than a common miracle. It's when people's backs are bent, and I do not know why, why God do it so many times. That one, I pray for people, their legs looks like the one is shorter than the other, but it's actually a twisted back. And then, that was the first miracle that Sam have seen, and that turned him to the Lord. Give God a hand, amen. And that's great miracles. I've seen the blind eyes open. I've seen a paralyzed person there in those seats that they carried in here. He was completely, totally, totally, totally paralyzed. We still got the footage, but it was very bad footage. That's the greatest miracle I've seen in this ministry. I prayed for him. He was sitting on that chair. And um, when I prayed for him, he fell off the chair. And immediately, when he touched the ground, he was healed and restored. He was not standing up bit by bit. He was jumping up like a spring and running around this building, flat out. The muscles that didn't work for a long time cannot run like that to begin with. That was such a great miracle. I've seen the greatest of miracles here. I've seen the blind eyes open. I've seen such great miracles here. But the greatest miracle, friend, it's when someone that was bad got saved. Give your hand for that. Amen. That's the greatest of all. And the, together with that, the greatest miracle is when people forgive. When people forgive. That's the greatest miracle. When people forgive and they get saved. And they receive forgiveness from God. And that's the miracle we, miracle we will run for in Jesus' name. There's no one so bad that he cannot be saved. I tell you, give God a hand. Amen. Say to them, but there's no one so bad that he cannot be saved. And no one is so good that he doesn't need salvation. Like I said, many people think the Jews automatically must know God because they are Jews. Huh? No one can know the Father but by Jesus. No one can know the Father but by Jesus. Declare with me, no one can know the Father but by Jesus. Doesn't matter who it is. If he doesn't know Jesus, if he denied Jesus, he denied the Father. If he reject Jesus, he reject the Father. Whether he's a Jew or not, doesn't matter. But we pray the Jews will be saved. And they will be saved according to the Bible. They will all be saved in one day. But they will be the last people group that will be saved. Because they rejected salvation that came to them. They have been the first, but now they are the last. Therefore, Jesus said to the Jews, the first will be last, and the last will be first. And that's the case today on the planet. The Jews were the first ones. First the Jew, and then the Greek. They had the opportunity, and most of them rejected the opportunity. Now they are lost. The day when the Jews come in, in large amounts, they get saved, then you know the end is now here. Because they're the lost people group that's going to be saved. And they will all be saved in one day. One day with the Lord is not a 24-hour day. It's a spiritual day. It's longer than a 24-hour day. It's a period. 
That's the last people on this planet that will come into the kingdom when the full number of the Gentiles, the Bible says, have come in. Why is the Jews lost? Lost life? Because they rejected the Messiah and his followers. My ancestors have been of the first followers of Jesus. They had to flee for their lives because the Jews wanted to kill everyone who believed in the Messiah. They had to flee for Italy. And that's where my ancestors was for a long time. I don't boast about it. But I know one thing, my ancestors didn't reject Jesus. The Jews today in Israel, they rejected the descendants of those who rejected Jesus, but they all will be saved in one day, says your Bible. Amen. When the full number of the Gentiles came in, in other words, if all the non-Jewish people got the opportunity to be saved, or the chance to be saved, only then God will go back to the Jews and save them. But surely he will save them. Give God a hand for that. Amen. Today, this is the case. The, the, the Indians in the Amazon jungle get saved. The Indians in the North America will be saved, and we will be part of that. I cannot wait. I wait for the borders to open. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The people in the far, far corners of Russia, the black Russians and the red Russians will be saved. There's white Russians, black Russians, and Red Russians, if you don't know. But the red Russians and the black Russians live very primitively in the farthest corners, far corners of Russia, on the border of China. And in China, there's many unsaved people there as well. They will all come in. You'll get excited when you see where those people live, very primitive. They live there. They need to come to Jesus. Who God's going to send there, I do not know. But they don't know Jesus, my friend. And when all the numbers, the, the whole, whole number of non-Jewish nations came in, the full number, then the Jews will have their chance again the second time. And then when they came in, you know the end is now here. Not yet the end. Read to us that scripture. When the full number of Gentiles came in. A Gentile is just a name for people who's not Jewish. All the people who are not Jewish people is called Gentile. Maybe not a good name, but it's non-Jewish people. When the full number of the Gentiles came in, then the Jews will have their second chance, and they will be saved. In Jesus' name. Pray with me, Lord God of heaven. Raise up missionaries and evangelists that will reach these people in Jesus' name. The black Russians the red Russians, and the white Russians. And everyone shout, Amen. And the people of China, there's many different tribes in China. You, didn't, you think it's only one tribe? There's so many different tribes in China. And so many of those tribes have never heard about the name of Jesus. May God raise up missionaries and evangelists to go there in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You get your scripture? Yes, Pastor. Can you read to us? Thank you. We read from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 25. Mm -hmm. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that the blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Until the fullness... Of the Gentiles has come in. They are blinded, the Jews. They are blinded. It's almost impossible to lead the Jew to Jesus. But I tell you, miracles happen. Look around here. Look at life. Look at life. Hello, Clive. There's a miracle. Give God a hand for the miracle. It's very difficult to get the Jew to Jesus because they rejected Jesus. They are blinded that they cannot see the gospel. They are chief sinners. But here and there, they get saved like Uncle Clive. Give God a hand for people that get saved. Hallelujah. But God loved them, obviously. And I love them. And they will be saved. And then the veil will be lifted and they can see. No one can see when God does not open your two eyes. 
a week went by where I was concerned about a couple of things and frustrated and was wrestling with God like Jacob wrestled with God. And I said to Pam, I look at different pastors' sons and I tell you, that's a problem for me. It's a heartache. I see so many pastors' sons that get destroyed by the devil and I get frustrated and happy with that. So many pastors' sons. And I started last night and out of frustration, I said to my wife, it looks like the pastors are the cursed ones on the earth. I think at a certain man, Tini Kronia, he lost his one son to the Satanists and the other one to drugs. And he was a great preacher of God. I look at some people here, I'm not going to mention the name here, in Polokwani, great preachers. Then their sons sit in, his son sit in jail. And I think about another pastor. His son is homosexual. And I think about another pastor. His son is homosexual. And I can start to mention them up like that. And I say to Pam last night, it looks like the pastors are the cursed ones of the earth. And I know Satan goes for the pastor's sons. I know it so well. And I cried. And I was frustrated. And then I closed my eyes and I had a dream. And as always... God gave me revelation while I slept. And I woke up ashamed because I argued with God. Just realizing how good a God he is. Because if it was not for his goodness, I would have died long ago. Give God a hand for his goodness. And I repented this morning and I said, Lord, sorry that I argue, argued with you. But it's a fact and I cry about it. Pastor's sons get killed. The other day, a certain pastor, his son got killed. I phoned him. I said, sorry, man. I think about you. He was surprised. He's a black pastor. That I, as a white pastor, phoned him. I said to him, I just think about you. It's tough, man. It's tough when you lose your son. But obviously, when Satan cannot get the fathers, he go for the sons. But we pray against that tonight in Jesus' name. Pray with me, Lord God of heaven. We pray for the pastor's sons for protection in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you keep them safe. That you do not allow the devil to get close to the pastor's sons in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I say today, I had to say it, I say it this morning, and I say, said it this morning, and I say it tonight again. I tell you, God is a good God. Give you the good Lord a great hand. Amen. I actually said last night, it looks like God is good to all the people that the pastors minister to, but to the pastors, their sons die. Their sons get placed into prison because of obviously wrong things that they do. Their sons become homosexuals. How is this? Well, you need to count the cost when you go into ministry because Satan will come for you. But we pray for protection. Pray again with me, Lord God of heaven. Protect the sons of the pastors. Protect the sons of the preachers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan knows very well how much you can hurt a pastor when he touches his sons. I mean, that's the biggest pain you can experience. But God is a good God, and he will protect because we pray in Jesus' name. I say to you, if we need to do something, we need to pray more. Never stop praying in Jesus' name. Because there's many things that are dependent on our prayer life. And we need to push away evil forces in Jesus' name. Your fight is not against flesh and blood. Your fight is, your fight is against demons, evil spirits, principalities and powers. But let us put God's power into action by our prayer life. Say to guys, don't stop praying. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I take you quickly to Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Heavenly places. Say to anybody, heavenly places. How many heavens are there? Well, three, as far as we know. 
There's maybe more, but I know about three according to the Bible. There's a first heaven, there's a second heaven, and then there's the third heaven, and that's the great heaven, the eternal heaven, where there's no end to it. It's an amazing place. Woo! Because God is there. And that's where I'm aiming to go. I cannot wait. But I'm not going to go before the time. But the day when I go, I will be glad. Paul said, to live as Christ and to die is gain. Let me tell you another miracle. There was a boy in Russia. He was a serviceman in the military of, of Russia. His name was Vanya. You need to read the book, please. I bought some of the books. You need to read that book to revive you spiritually. He was called up to the army in Russia. But in Russia, you're not allowed to preach the gospel, not to even allowed to name, name the name of Jesus. And he preached Jesus all the way, and he was not scared to preach to Jesus, but he got severely persecuted and jailed for mentioning even the name of Jesus. And many things happened. The KGB got hold of him, and they tortured him, and they put him in a freezer, tried to kill him and get him to deny the name of Jesus. At one time, this book inspired me greatly when I was a very young Christian. And eventually, they said, we're going to get this guy to deny Jesus. He's in the military in Russia. We're going to get him to deny the name of Jesus. They put him in a freezer. And then they took him out, knowing, knowing in their minds he will now deny the name of Jesus. And they will sign a contract that he will never tell anyone about this name again. They put the paper there with a the pen. But to get him to be able to write because he was cold and freezed up, they gave him a cup of coffee, and they gave him a piece of bread to revive him. Here's what he did with the piece of bread and the coffee. He took communion and said, thank you, Lord, for your body, and thank you, Lord, for your blood. He made them furiously angry. They were very angry at him. And then just before they killed him, the KGB really killed him, eventually. Just before he died, he was in his bungalow, and military-wise, but it was, uh, it was uh, uh, you get a, uh, in the military, you get a jail for military people in, within a military camp. They, they called it in South Africa, a DB. And he was in this DB, and he could not go leave, leave the room where he was in. He had to sign out. There was a guard at the gate. And he could not leave that. And one night just before he went, just before he died, God came to visit him in the cell. And God said to him, hold on a little longer. Don't, give, don't deny my name. And then God took him to heaven. Physically, not spiritually only. Spirit, soul, and body. God took him. Bah! He was out of the bungalow. They came to look for him in the bungalow. These, these are known facts, okay? They came to look for him in the bungalow. bungalow. And they could not find him in that bungalow. They went and looked in the toilets, the bathroom, everywhere, because they wanted to interrogate him again. They couldn't find him. He was gone. How is this possible? He didn't sign out. The guard at the gate didn't see him go out. No sign of him. No, he didn't sign out. Where was he? In the meantime, God took him to the third heaven. Amazing. Few people go to the third heaven in this life. Well, he was one of them. Another one was Paul. And Paul was actually, didn't want to mention it was him, but he said he knows someone who went to the third heaven who's seen things that he's not allowed to speak about. Paul said that. But it's actually Paul. But he said, I know someone. He didn't say it was me because of pride. He was scared of pride. Vanya went to the third heaven and he saw the greatness of the heavens and was so inspired when he came back. And after that, the KGB killed him. And he went to be at this third heaven. This is an amazing, an amazing, undescribable, amazing, eternal place. This place got no end. Kepo, bring me an apple or a lemon, please. If there's some, something, someone in the kitchen, please. I want to show the people something. Or lemon, anything like that round. Even it's an amazing place. I've been in a second heaven, not in a third heaven. I wish, but one day we will go there. I mean, say to never, one day we will go there. What is so amazing about that place? Well, God showed me a couple of things about the third heaven, only a couple of things. There are so many sounds in the third heaven that you've never heard. 
You can imagine the music that you will hear there. You know certain sounds on this, in this realm. But in this realm, thank you, my brother. This one is it's not round enough for the earth. Thank you, Tsepu. It's a funny earth, this. <laughs> the third heaven. You know, there's no time. You cannot say, I've been in heaven even for five minutes. Because there's no minutes. There's no calendars. There's no years. There's nothing. Just eternity. It's amazing. There's no night. There's no day. There's not a 24-hour day. It's just going on forever and ever and ever. But for you to understand, every five minutes, for your brain to understand, every five minutes in heaven, you will hear a new sound that you've never heard before. Every five minutes. And for eternity, every five minutes, you will hear a new sound together with the sounds that you already heard. For eternity, you will hear every five minutes a new sound. Can you imagine the music that you will hear in heaven? Huh? Can you imagine? And every five minutes, I say five minutes for you to understand. Every five minutes, you will see a new color. Why every five minutes? Every five minutes for eternity, you'll see a new color that you've never seen before. Together with many of the colors that you've seen before. And that will go on for eternity. For eternity, long. How long is eternity? Can someone tell me how long is eternity? <laughs> Can someone that is wise among us tell us how long is eternity? Huh? It's forever. How long is forever? <laughs> it's endless. It's endless. You're very correct, my friend. You are a wise man. It's endless. So for eternity... Endlessly, every five minutes, you will see a new color that you've not seen before, together with those who you've seen before. And every five minutes, you experience a new type of fulfillment that you've never experienced before. And that will go on for eternity, every five minutes. I just use five minutes for you to understand. Every five minutes, you'll experience a new fulfillment that you've never experienced before, together with the other fulfillments. And every five minutes in heaven, you experience a new type of love that you've never experienced before. Every five minutes, and it will go on forever. Every five minutes, forever, forever. Every five minutes, you'll experience a new kind of love. Where does all these things come from? That is so amazing. From God, that's within him. The heaven will be amazing because God is there. The Bible says he will fill the heavens. Every five minutes, you experience a new type of joy that you've never experienced before. There's different types of, types of joy. Come on. There's a joy when you experience when you buy a new car. Is that not true? I remember the joy experience when I know I'm going to marry my wife. I remember the joy when I experienced when I passed my grades in school. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Many different kinds of joy, types of joy. Now in heaven, every five minutes, you'll experience a new type of joy that you have never experienced before, together with the other joys. Can you describe heaven? That's why Paul said, I cannot describe what I've seen. It's amazing. Say to the guy next to don't be so dumb to miss the heavens. Serve Jesus. The way to this heaven, the third heaven, is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I mentioned a couple of things. There's many others I can mention. Let me tell you another thing. Every five minutes, every time that you eat something in heaven, are you going to eat in heaven? You can eat, but you don't have to eat. But every five minutes in heaven, if you, if you are eating, you will, you will taste a new taste that you've never tasted before. There's so many tastes in heaven. I take this apple. Within this apple, that represents the whole universe that you know, the galaxies that you know. It's more or less around. Everything is around. Okay? 
Within this apple, there's the earth, the sun, the moon, turn around one another. And this represents all the galaxies. The first heaven is a spiritual realm around us that you cannot see. If you can open your eyes tonight, you will see these angels here everywhere. These angels. That's the first heaven. The first heaven go on more or less from here to the end of the earth's atmosphere. First heaven. The realm that you cannot see. But the realm is here. You can sense it. You can sense the angels. Sometimes God opens our spiritual eyes and we can see them. In this realm there's also demons, which I don't like to speak about, but they are here. But not in this building tonight. Give God a hand. I mean, no ways. But in the first, first heaven, that's what the Bible says, our fight is not against flesh and blood, blood, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, demons and spiritual, spiritual hosts in the heavenlies. So there's demons in the first heaven, okay? They're around here. But they're not in the second heaven, they're not in the third heaven. Give God a hand for that. <laughs> Satan was in the first heaven, but he's been kicked out there. He lost the glory because he rebelled against God. And he was found no place for him in the third heaven. And he was hauled to the earth. And his domain now is only the first heaven. Did this a second heaven, more or less, from where the atmosphere of the earth end? Till the end of the galaxies. This apple represents now all the galaxies. Everything is in this apple. But what is outside of this apple? What is outside the galaxies, the known galaxies? They got an end. Outside of them is the third heaven. You know how big is the third heaven? Endless. Endless. And God is filling that endless heaven with himself. Can you understand how great God is? You'll never, never grasp that with your physical brain. You understand what I say? Must I explain it again? This represents the galaxies that's known to us. Within these galaxies, there's the earth, the sun, and all the other things. All the other planets and suns and moons and all the galaxies, the Milky Way that we see, it's all in here. But it's got to end. And when you leave them, this is the second heaven. Within this. This is where the second heaven ends. First heaven is in here, and the second heaven ends here. And outside of the second heaven, there's the third heaven. That is around this endless, endless, endless. Therefore, if you ask me, where is God's heaven? Well, it's up there, it's down there, it's that side, it's that side for eternity. That's how big it is. And if you keep on serving Jesus, that's where you will end. Give God a hand. Amen. And that's what it's going to remind for you. But you're not going to sit and look at the flowers. Do you know that the flowers praise God? Do you know that the trees praise God in heavens? Do you know they praise God on the earth, but you cannot see it because you've got a limited realm. You can only see in a couple of dimensions. The rest you cannot see. The trees are praising the Lord. Trees can communicate if you don't know it. Animals communicate if you don't know it. They speak, definitely they communicate. Even fishes communicate. Snakes communicate. They communicated to Eve, the snake. Satan used the snake to communicate to Eve. So the trees communicate. The animals communicate. Snakes are not that dumb. You think snakes are dumb? Dumb animals? You make a huge mistake. They could speak in the Garden of Eden. Even Eden. Otherwise, Eve would have not listened to the snake. One day there was a small snake in church. And I don't kill snakes. They got their place. They kill the rats and they eat the rats and they keep them in control. So I don't kill them. So if you accidentally come upon a snake, you don't Run away, please. Amen. I don't kill them. But one night, we were sitting, my daughter, a couple of friends were sitting there, and there was a small snake, and we observed this snake. Small, they call it a red lip, adult red lip snake. And the snake was now obviously expecting us to kill him because that's the curse upon a snake. 
your head will be crushed. You got cursed among all the animals of the earth. And the snake was there observing us and realized we're not going to kill him. That was a surprise to the snake. He was surprised. And he looked at us one by one. And then he decided to investigate because it's funny that these people don't kill him. And he came, and he came for my daughter to investigate, put his small tongue against the leg and investigate, what are these guys and what are they doing? You can must say, Pastor, you, you and your daughter is crazy. <laughs> I'm not scared of snakes. The Bible says in Mark 16, I will pick them up and they will do me no harm. I'm not scared of snakes. So there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a rule here. You don't kill no snake because they got their place. They keep the rats in, in their place. So the snakes here know that they don't get killed. It's amazing. I don't understand that. But I don't have to understand that. They know immediately. And if they communicate with one another, I don't know. But it's actually a known fact that they communicate trees and animals. But this is their dimensions that you don't understand at this point of time because you lost them when we fell into sin. The human race lost the ability to understand the trees and to understand the animals. You go to TV Joshua, he will say to you, I speak to the animals and they speak to me. And I met one man, a certain Domini, that was, thought that TV Joshua was joking. TV Joshua said, I communicate with the animals. And when he said, you must be joking, I remember TV got very frustrated and angry at me. And he took a couple of books. So TB, TB Joshua got his own personality and character. He were a couple of books. And he took some of the books and he put a small pile of books with a big pile. He said, of your grace has been taken away now. That small is your grace now, yeah. Because you disbelieve that I communicate with the animals. If you meet TB Joshua, he's a, he's a different type of character. <laughs> he believes what he believes, like I believe what I believe. I'm not going to back off what I believe in. One day at the pole there, the electric pole, a lot of electric work there, there was a certain snake there. It's a sand snake, actually a beautiful snake with a yellow belly, nice stripes, yellow belly, very, very beautiful snake, according to me, not, maybe not according to you. And the snakes know they don't get killed here. I do not know how they know it, but they know it. Clive came to me and said, there's a snake in the electric box where I need to work. I said, don't worry. Ignore it. Just go on with your work. Now, some of the screws he had to lose was in the coils of this snake. Clive, were you okay that day? Why did you do it so, by the way? But he worked. He listened to his pastor. And he was now unscrewing these screws and working in between the coils of the snake. And you know what the snake did? Absolutely, totally nothing. It's unbelievable. Did he move when you worked there? Huh? He didn't. But this is what a, quite a, a high-string snake. If you come near him, he free, very fast snake. But he didn't move because he knew, I do not know if they communicate, but this man is not going to kill me. And so it's with all the snakes here. It's amazing. There's a certain place in India where you can go and photograph wild leopards and you can come very close to them. Very, very close. You can even get eight meters to them. Distance eight meters from them. So this is well known on the earth where you can photograph wild leopards and get very, very close to them. But in the beginning, all the farmers killed the leopards because the leopards killed the goats. And then one man who had a heart for the leopards decided he's going to stop that. And he got international funds that if a leopard will kill a goat, they should not go after the leopard, but he will replace the goat for them if they can prove that the leopard killed the goat or took the goat away. And so the leopards, I do not know how they communicate, but they do communicate. Because all of a sudden, when the leopards knew, when they stopped killing the leopards, all the leopards in the vicinity, it's a very large area, like Limpopo, very large. All of a sudden, all the leopards lost their fear completely of the people. 
and you could get close to them to photograph them. Just to tell you for interest's sake, animals do communicate. Trees communicate. When you go to Mopani Felt, and a kudu come and eat there on a certain Mopani tree, so that the kudu doesn't eat too many of the leaves, they communicate and they give up poison, all the trees in the vicinity. So you tell me they cannot communicate? Huh? God is good. Give him a great hand. Amen. You lost some of your abilities. But it's okay. You will get them again. Just stay faithful to Jesus. Never deny him. Stay faithful to the end. It is worthwhile. Vanda, Vanya, but before he died, God went, took him up, showed him in heavens. He came back so full of joy, knowing that soon he will be there. He endured the severe torture of the Russian KGB. And he passed away, punctured in his heart by them. And he went to be with the Lord. And we will meet him there. He was a young guy. He was 20 years old. Young guy. But he's in heaven. Amazing story. It inspired me so, so much. A real story. God is good. Ask the guy next to you, are you on your way to heaven? If you're on your way to heaven, say to neighbor, endure till the end. Never stop. Don't stop believing because it will be worthwhile. God prepared a place for you there and Jesus paid the price so that you can go there. He came to take away your sin so that you can be with God forever and ever. Thank you, Jesus, for listening. It was a long sermon. Give God a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you excited to go to heaven? To live as Christ and to die as gain. Paul said, to stay here is for your advantage, but to go, it will be good for me. Amen. Let's give our tithe and offering to Jesus, then I cannot wait to pray for you guys. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Chetty. Hallelujah. Jump to your feet. You've got a wave offering of eternity. And shout, eternity! And give God another wave offering. Say, here I come! <laughs> give him another wave offering of joy! Woo! And come and give of joy unto Jesus. Amen. I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday
Jesus someday, oh yes. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday, oh. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to pray for you. Please come to the front. Find yourself in his seat with his, not the cross, even in front here. We want to pray for you in Jesus' name. Come, Pammy, Mama Ruti, let us pray for God's people. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. No limit to what our God can do, but he won't be up to me, child. He makes the way to all. What can I feel with, my friend? Ja, wat wil jy weet met veel bid? Leek met veel bid dat jy jy hart het vir dit. Dat jy hier jou hart wakker maak vir dit. Ontvang dan, in die naam van Jesus. Amen. Halleluja. Hallo vriend. Are you okay? You enjoy your work? Huh? You're seeking a job. Stand up, please. Huh? Okay, name. What's his name? Huh? Amos. 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 Father, I pray for Amos that you restore unto him everything that he lost in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on him. And restore him completely in Jesus' name. Also pray for a permanent work for him. A good job in Jesus' name. Pray for his children. Pray for you for good health, my friend. Thank you. Yes. Yes. What was the gift that you lost? You speak about the restoration of a spiritual gift. What was the gift that you had? I release you to do that in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at my eyes, my friend. In the mighty name of Jesus. I release you to do what God wants you to do. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Go and teach God's word. Amen. Please, thank you. Yes, Lord. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I pray for grace. I pray, God, that you give her what she needs. In the name of Jesus, take this. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, sister. In Jesus' name. Hey. Jesus. How are you? 
your leg. What's wrong with the leg? Swollen and painful. Hmm? Okay, God will heal you. In the name of Jesus. Is the pain severe? Can you stand up? Feel the pain. Is it still there? You still feel it? Huh? Huh? It's now better. It will even be better. Come here, please. Can you feel any pain now? It's good. It's good. Your God is the healer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Van baie is. Hy geniet het. Is kreit, hy. Hmm, geniet jou. Ik ga bezig raak met echt een zin. Hier die weer. <laughs> Jy gaan bezig raak, hoor. In Jesus' naam. Amen. Dank je Jesus. Hier ek bid vir kinders. In Jesus' naam. Hier ek bid dat al kinders goed doen. Dat Henry sal weet wat hy volgende moet doen. Dat saam met hom, so saam ook sal weet wat hy volgende moet doen. In die naam van Jesus. Heere, dank je dat hy praat. Dank je Heere, dat hy dier die geest spreek. In Jesus' naam. Hier ek bid beskerming vir die ander kinders en vierde aan huis, en ek bid vader dat die praktijk goed doen, en financiële voorspoed sal plaasvind, in Jesus naam, hier ek sê na, en hy sal dan, in Jesus naam, amen, in die naam van Jesus, dank u Jesus, amen, dank u, God sê en vir jou, amen, sien jy die weer, ja, wat sê jy, Moet jy dit dinsdag gaan haal? Ek verstaan. Hy het sy plannetjies. Die mannetjies sê jy. Ok, wat wil jy moet ons veel bid? Dat alles gaan uitwerk. A wonderlijke lift. Wat veilig rein. Dank je, Jesus. Amen. Jere, ek bid vir die kinders, dat hulle dit alles sal uitwerk, dat hulle goed sal, sal, goed sal doen waar hulle gaan. In Jesus naam. Een veilige rit, en een rit dier u beplan. Dis wat ons vraag, in Jesus naam. En jy sê amen. Amen. Jy gaan baie bezig graag hoor. En jy gaan ook tamelijk bezig graag hoor. Amen. Halleluja, ja my vriend. Dis ek kan. Ja my, jy moet ons kry wat jou help hoor. Hmm. 
Jezus. Jezus, ek bid het vir jou, in die naam van Jezus. Lord, increase of wisdom in Jesus' name. Hello, how are you? Good man. In the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in what sense? In the mighty name of Jesus, yes. Your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Breakthrough is coming in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Hmm? Okay. What is the other one? Yeah, this is a bit out for a second. This is a rare bit out for that type of browser. She needs a miracle. Stand up as a belief. Jere ons bid vir miracle, wonderwerk vir oma. In Jesus naam. Dank u Jesus. Wonderwerk, nee. Amen, gaan het goed met jou. Right. Is hy goed vir jou? Dankie. Anders is dit, as al moet ek uit my speels maak. Wat kan ek vir jou bid? Wat doen jy nou? Is nog steeds vir die plek? Is jou appiesje papier ingevul? Is dit rarig in plek? Is jy geregistreer as een appie? Ja, maar jy moet uitvind. Kan die mens nie vir jou sê nie? Kan jy nie uitvind of jy geregistreer? Hoe kom vind jy nie uit? Ja, maar jy moet uitvind of jy geregistreer is. Jy moet die tyd op hee. Want as jy vir appieship gaan, jy net vir die toets gaan, en wil weet hoe lang was dit. En dit moet wees vanaf jy geregistreer is as een appie. As een vaklever. So jy wil nie 100% seker of jy geregistreer is. Ek vraag jou. Huh? nie met die papiere sê, is jy goed geteken vir dit? Die mense vat jy vir een raad door. Jy moet seker maak van dit hoor. Hoe gaan jy so? So jy geregistreer het as een vakleerling, toen is jy papiere teken. So jy is nie geregistreer nie hoor. As jy niks geteken, is jy nie geregistreer nie. Hierdie ons hou jy aan die lijn. Jy moet nou rechtig nou plan maak. Dat jy geregistreer al. Wat jy ook al doen hoor. Soblief in Jesus naam. Amen. Heer, ek bid vir hom vir weisheid en leiding. Dat hy precies sal weet wat hy moet doen in Jesus naam. Dank jy. Amen. Jy wil een vakleeringskap hier. Jy moet jy seker maak die papier is geteken, is ingevuld. Want die mens hou jy aan die lijn toe. Amen, vat jy so. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for endurance. I thank you for your goodness upon his life. In Jesus' name. Look at my eyes, friend. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Stan. Mm, keep your hands like this. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mm. 
with the same sister that we prayed for last time. Another one. Okay. Where is this sister of yours? Teshechu. I see a Christian. Christian. But religious. They need to be born again. <laughs> but we pray for grace. They put, bring me a red apron, please, my friend. I will give you again. You put, don't put it on, okay? And you need to try to lead it to Jesus. Amen. Please, now? Okay, great stuff, man. Great stuff. Then it's an open door. Amen. Thank you, my friend. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus. How's the children and the wife? How's the children and the wife? They're fine. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, God bless you and your family. Go and put that on your, on your sister, okay? And I pray that you will stay faithful. Father, I thank you for a prayer life, an active prayer life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you work in his heart to pray the things that you want him to pray for in the name of Jesus. Lord, he is yours. He belongs to you. Direct his heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Child of God, God bless you. Thank you. Okay. This 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 malatu this mulukait wat kom ons bid daar teen in Jesus naam amen bid in the name of Jesus go and pray more about it and let when you God show you something come and tell me kom wees my wat die Here jou wees hoor in Jesus naam gaan bid daar oor hoor wat is wat 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 in the mighty name of Jesus how's my sister doing In the name of Jesus, everything that you ask for, take. Hallelujah. Yes. He's on. That's right. Fat. Thank you, Jesus. Clement, you're going to have a good, good week in Jesus' name.
De mí es como la historia. Oh, I can't let's take it any way, take it any way. Amen. I bid for him in the name of Jesus. I bid for him that what I need is to see and stand to stand to me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hoe gaan het? Ik kan nog zeggen, ik bid voor jou ma voor bevrijding. In die naam van Jezus. In Jesus naam. Ik bid voor jou voor vrede. Voor bijzet en zeg je mij hoor. Halleluja. Kijk op mij. Van hem. Halleluja. Ja, ik weet nog altijd zien, maar God weet eerst gewoon iemand anders te zien. Het recht zo. Amen. So now, Father, we pray for Sir Nell's Oma, also with Nell's mother. We pray for grace, mercy, your hand will be upon her in Jesus' name. We pray for Nikita for, to be adaptable and to just do God's will in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. And to be able to handle change in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tabisu. I take that thing out of your throat. That's a demonic attack on your throat. Tabisa. Tabiso. I pray that God will heal your, your, whole, your throat. And your whole health system will be healed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. People who stream with us, God, fill your homes with God's glory, with God's presence, in the mighty name of Jesus. May your prayers be answered, and may you have an amazing week in Jesus' name. People who sit with us, you can take your, your stand in the presence of God. I release you into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Please bless everyone around you. And bless the Lord. You can say to the person next to you, I release you into an amazing week. I release you into God's faith. I will see you again in faith. Enjoy your week in the mighty name of Jesus. Do well. Make money. And be successful. In the name of Jesus. When I see you again, I will see you in great joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are released. Freddy, God bless you this week. Enjoy your week. Amen. God bless you. You will have a good week. <laughs>